Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross from PTCG Radio, and I'm back with another game I played on PTCGO, the official online program of the Pokemon trading card game. And this time, I'm giving another run out to the Big Basics deck. This is a game I played recently, and I thought was fairly interesting, so I thought I would pop this one up and let you guys have a gander at it. Big Basics is a deck which I expect to see a fair amount of play at Worlds, which is actually kicking off in just a week's time. As I record this, it is Saturday the 9th of August, which means one week today, Worlds will be off. And I actually get to go first here. Now, the good thing about this Big Basics deck is it doesn't mind going second. You can get a Landorus and um, a Fighting Energy and be attacking turn one. Now, it looks like I'm playing against a Pyrrhal deck, which is a slight pain, but I've got some stuff to use. I've not got a completely dead turn one. I've got a half-decent starting hand there, so that will do. And, of course, I'm getting an extra card because my opponent Mulliganed. So my opponent has got Litleo out there. Now, this deck does have a Pyro matchup. Essentially, you've got Raichu with a full bench and a muscle band, or a full bench laser, or some combination of half bench, laser, muscle band, Verbank, etc. can KO Pyro. Not to mention I play Garbodor to shut off the ability and be able to get the KOs with um, Mewtwo and Landorus. So I play that Computer Search because I want to get going here fairly quickly, and I'm going to get a Trubbish. Now, first of all, that allows me to get my Garbodor out nice and early to face down his Pyro, but also it just gives me more Pokemon on the bench for my Pikachu. And, annoyingly, after I believe I just discarded an energy for the first discard there, I really don't want to discard more energy slash Professor's Letter in order to try and get another basic out. So I am not going to play that um, Ultra Ball. If I draw something rubbish at the beginning of my next turn, then I can afford to kill the Professor's Letter and whatever I draw. Get myself a Landorus or a Mewtwo or something like that, evolve up to the Raichu, and then play the, uh, the Professor Juniper. So for the time being, I am going to have to hold off on that Ultra Ball. The discard, in terms of energy, would be too painful. It's not worth killing too much energy too early on, because it means I might run late. Uh, might run out late game, and at the end of the day, I'm not in a huge hurry. Now, my opponent has had to kill a Lissandra and a Pyrrhal, we saw from his discard there, so he's also suffering from the discards just a little bit. Now, at the moment, this still looks a little bit like Michael Pramwatt's list. Now, Michael Pramwatt's list, he's the one who got second, he got uh, US Nationals, he played a single Mewtwo and a single Charizard, and the rest was Pyrrhal. And this deck has a very good matchup against that. I play Mewtwo myself. I'm really not worried. If it's Michael Pramwatt's list, I've got a very good matchup here. Now, I can play the N here, but to be honest, I'd rather go for the aggressive start, get another Pokemon out, and then just Juniper. So the question is what I'm actually going to want here. And I'm going to get my own Mewtwo, because if it is Michael Pramwatt's list, and the majority of people nowadays tend to play very similar lists, ones that have done well and they've got off the internet, uh, he's only playing one Mewtwo, so by putting my own Mewtwo down, I'm basically locking him out of his Mewtwo for the game. I do, unfortunately, whiff energy entirely, which is a slight pain in the neck, but there's not really much we can do about that, so... You know, what can you do? I do hit the Enhanced Hammer there, so he's actually lost, I believe, two DCE now, because he had to get rid of one of them in his early Juniper. So if he is playing more than one Mewtwo, and he wants to go to a Mewtwo War, I'm feeling pretty good about this, because I've got four DCE and he's got two. So at the moment, it's looking all right. It's just a slight pain here that I've actually not drawn any energy. That's going to be annoying later on. But... I get my second Pikachu out, and I've got a Raichu for next turn, so it's looking alright, quite frankly. It's looking pretty good. Now the question is, do I retreat the Raichu into something else, or just end my turn? Because that Raichu is looking quite vulnerable, and I might need it later on, but I've got a Trubbish out. Raichu becomes very, very valuable when my I don't have a Garbodor to shut off Pyrrhal's ability, because then Raichu's all I can attack with. But it's not a big deal if I've got uh, 
Garbodor out. Now the big problem here is he's just popped down another Mewtwo. Now I'm still questioning whether he can win a Mewtwo war having already used two of his two double colourless sorry, two of his four double colourless energy. Presuming he plays four, everybody does. But the problem is we've all played those games where we do the maths and our opponents only has two of their DCE T he he here we go and then all of a sudden they manage to hit both their DCE at the right time. The way the game works at the moment, there is a lot of emphasis put on who can draw well off of supporters, and that's not really where I want the game to go, and that's basically what happens to Mewtwo Wars. So my opponent gets another Litleo out, and I'm looking there, and he plays a Juniper, which he hit off the random receiver. We knew that was coming. So the question is, how many Mewtwo is he playing? Is it just the two? How aggressive do we want to go with the Mewtwo's? Because essentially, if I kill his Pyroar with my Raichu, he's probably going to have to respond with his Mewtwo. Now I topped out the Garbodor there, which is awesome, and then I play my own Juniper, so my board's looking quite nice. Uh, shame I didn't hit a single Fighting Energy to use that Raichu, but at the end of the day, I hit the Verbank Laser and I hit the Muscle Band, but I don't even need the Muscle Band to get the KO on that Pyroar. So I'm going to retreat to my other Raichu and play my first DCE, because there's no point attaching free energy to one Raichu. And then I can play the laser, put him down to 80 HP, and Circle Circuit with four bench Pokemon will do 80 damage, and will get the KO on his Pyroar, putting me a prize up and forcing him into some kind of retaliation. Now, the re most likely retaliation is he'll pop down a Mewtwo and either a Muscle Band or a laser... And that will allow him to get the KO on my Raichu. And then the question is, do I then follow up my own Raichu? Do I start hitting with Landorus? I've got the Muscle Band Laser there. So Landorus will start doing a fair amount of damage. And there's his third DCE. As I said, they tend to have them when they need to. Or do I Juniper, searching for my own DCE? Because I can play the Laser or Muscle Band and then Juniper. And then if I hit my own DCE, I'm ahead in the Mewtwo War. But of course, he's got a Mewtwo down. And then he plays a Reshiram. So this is very much not Michael Pramwatt's list. And now, I'm a little bit concerned. Because against the standard Michael Pramwatt list, it's one Charizard, one Mewtwo, and a bunch of Pyroar. So as long as I get my Raichu and Garbodor down, the, Pi uh, the Pyroar aren't a problem. Raichu kills them, Pyro allows something else to kill them. His one Mewtwo isn't going to win a war against my... I think I'm playing two Mewtwo in this deck. And Charizard is a big investment. But with the Reshiram there, this is the kind of thing about counter decks. What do I do against Reshiram? He's going to blue flare. My Mewtwo does 60, and he can revenge KO me. My Raichu does 100. I suppose I can kill with Raichu. But to get the KO on his Reshiram with Raichu, I need two energy, a full bench, a muscle band, and a laser. Landorus doesn't do much, and if I don't kill the Reshiram, he does 20 more damage to me than I did to him with the Outrage attack. Reshiram isn't an amazing attacker, but it's very good if you're not prepared. So I play the laser, I'm going to pop the muscle band on, I'm sorry, I'm going to put an energy onto my Landorus, a muscle band onto my Landorus, and essentially, my thinking here is, I'm not going to get the one hit kill on the Mewtwo. Now as it happened, I could have killed the Mewtwo there, but if you blindly charge into Mewtwo Wars, then your thinking basically is, I'm guaranteed to win this Mewtwo War. If I get the KO on his Mewtwo, I go down to three prizes, he does 120 at least with his Reshiram, and then I'm not going to get the KO on his Reshiram with my Mewtwo. So, I'm going for the easier play, and I'm putting down a second Trubbish there, because I don't want him to kill my Garbodor. And here, I'm doing 50 damage... With going up to 80 with the laser, he is asleep. I can do 30 to that Litleo on the bench, maybe getting a KO in the future, or at least softening him up for future KOs. And I'm playing this kind of conservatively. I could have gone full speed ahead with Mewtwo, but that rest around's a bit of a problem. I, uh, this big basic deck is essentially a counter deck. Landorus does good early damage. Mewtwo counters Mewtwo, Deoxys, Evil Tower, stuff like that. Raichu Q's Evil Tower, Garbodor catches everything. But here, we're essentially against a deck which doesn't mind going for the Mewtwo War and has Rest around to kind of put the Mewtwo War in their favour by having a Pokemon which does 120 at damage and then goes down to one energy. And that's what he's doing here. The thing is, though, if I've got my Garbodor and Raichu, his Pyroar don't worry me, like, at all. 
They really don't worry me. I can get some easy KOs. His Mewtwo's are always at the mercy of my Mewtwo's if he wants to attack with them. So the question is, do I just let him kill my Landorus and then get kind of KOs later on? Because even if he goes ahead by a couple of prizes, it's only that Reshiram that's a bit of a pain in the neck here. Now, if I had a switch and a laser, I could kill it with Raichu. But I can only get a switch or a laser from that Skylar, so that's no good. Because otherwise, um, Raichu's not killing the Reshiram and he's getting KO'd back. So, the question here is, essentially, do I get the switch and hit his rest around with something else? Or, do I hit it with the active Landorus, get a laser as well, and just kind of accept that I'm going to get my Landorus KO'd next turn? And the mistake a lot of people make when they play this game is they think they've got to win 6-0. In fact, I'm going to get myself a Lasson for next turn. You don't need to win this game 6-0. In this particular game, I'm playing quite conservatively. And the reason I'm playing... And this is one of the reasons I wanted to show you this game. The reason I'm playing conservatively is this. I'm fairly sure I'm going to win playing conservatively. I could win quicker by going full-on Mewtwo and going very, very aggressively. But if he ends me down to nothing or draws better in terms of the Mewtwo war, then all of a sudden I've lost a game which I thought I was going to win. So I'm going to hit for 50, and I'm going to hit that Litleo on the bench. And I get a, a, a prize from the Litleo, which is another reason to keep the Landorus active. It's an easy prize, and if he, uh, if he evolves that into Pyro, I don't get that easy prize. So I still get a prize. He's going to then go a prize up by outraging for 70 to kill my Landorus. But I'm still not terribly worried. Because he's got the Mewtwo's, my Mewtwo kills him easily. Uh, that Reshiram's going to go down fairly easily, either to a Landorus with a Muscle Band and a Laser, or to a Raichu. And I can Skylar for the Laser there, if I wish. So it's really not the end of the world here. That, right, that Reshiram's going to go down, we're going to be even on prizes, and I'm not really terribly worried about how it's all going to work out. I can get a DCE onto that Mewtwo this turn, so that I can um, have it ready for future. And I can Lassonde and kill that Mewtwo either with the Raichu or indeed with my own benched Mewtwo. Although, if he draws into his last DCE and a Muscle Band or something, then he's going to get the KO there. So that's probably not something I want to do too early. So I've got that Muscle Band there. And I, I haven't got a tool on the Garbodor yet. And the reason is, I haven't been drawing into my Floatstones. I want to draw into my float stones, but I've not been drawing into them, and that's a real pain in the neck. And the muscle bands are too good on my low energy attackers. So I'm going to Lassonde up his Mewtwo, I'm going to circle circuit it, and I know I'm not, I haven't used many cards in the last couple of turns, and that's a concern. But I play a lot of, that was me dropping my laptop, don't worry about that. I know I play a lot of consistency cards here. And I'm not terribly worried. Not only that, but I've got a Mewtwo ready to attack. I've got a Garbodor ready to have a tool put on. I've got a Landorus that attacks for a single fighting energy. Now my opponent here could attach an energy and blue flare for the KO. Or attach a muscle band and outrage for 90 for the KO. So either way here, he's going to get the KO on my Raichu. He's going to even it up at two prizes each. And I'm not terribly worried about that. He would, I mean, essentially here, I'm probably going to get the KO with my Landorus next turn. I'm going to need a Muscle Band. And if we have a quick look in my discard pile, there's one in there, there's one on the right. So I've got a Muscle Band left. I've got a laser in hand. A Muscle Band laser will KO that um, rush around with my Landorus. And then Mewtwo will either kill the Pyro or will kill his own Mewtwo. Whatever he attacks with, I've got a Mewtwo ready to get the KO. Now, it is potentially slightly dodgy in that I need the Muscle Band and I can Skylar for it, but my deck is a little bit, given that I've got two prizes left to take, my deck is a little bit larger than I'd like. So he's really thrown a spanner in the works with that Reshiram, but what I've essentially done is I've just gone nice and slowly, nice and easily. 
I'm just picking his Pokemon off with mine, making the trades work in my favour, and just kind of carrying on like that. Now, he's only got one DCE left. What I could do here is play the laser, end him down to two, and get the KO on that Reshiram. But the problem there is, if he brings up that Pyro and I don't hit a... Um, and I don't hit a um, tool, then I'm not going to be able to kill his Pyro, and he's going to get the two-hit KO. Now, what you're going to see here, I believe, is me getting the KO with the Landris, which is going to evolve manually retreating the Mewtwo, getting rid of that DCE. I want to do that here. No, I don't want to do that. I'm actually going to use the Floatstone on him, not the Garbodor. Now, this is actually a risky play, because if he's got a Lassonde and his last DCE, and I have an end him, remember, then he could potentially get the KO with his Mewtwo. But that's asking a lot, and I don't think he's got it. I'm going to put the 30 on Mewtwo, so n now I believe he's on 140, and Energy Lassonde wins me the game. I can actually Lassonde and KO his Mewtwo without... And I've got one Lassonde left, without actually having him put any energy on there. So I've got the switch in hand, and it's going to be a big ask for him to get a two-hit KO on my Landorus here. If I draw a switch, or if I draw one of my remaining DCE, I can get that uh, Landorus out of the active... I'm not terribly worried about that. Now, you could argue there that I should have put the 30 on Pyroar, but the problem is I didn't have a tool on the Garbodor. If I'd been able to draw into my float stones more easily, what I could have done there was put the float uh, was put the 30 damage on Pyroar, and then it's just a laser for the win here. Because I'd be doing essentially 80 and Pyro would die. The problem with that is, I then would have had to get rid of the energy on my Mewtwo, which might not have been a problem. But, if it were to Lassonde up the Mewtwo, etc., that would have been an issue. So, maybe I could have just put the, the Floatstone there on the Garbodor, hit the Pyro on the bench with the Landorus, and then just needed a laser for win. But that's slightly dodgy there. I'm still going the conservative route. And he's going to end me down to one, which I'm not terribly worried about, because I play a lot of consistency cards in this list. And, you know, like I say there, I've, I've drew into, I had a couple of switch left, DCE, all of that good stuff. So he's going to hit me for 80. He's got the KO next turn, but of course I've got the DCE to retreat him. And all I need now is just a Pokemon tool. If I hit a Pokemon tool, then I'm fine. I don't. Which is a pain. But what can you do? The good news is, I don't have a hugely large deck anymore. I know a 39 and a discard. So there's only something like 12 cards left in my deck there. And if I actually draw my Lassonde next turn, I can Lassonde up and kill his Mewtwo by attaching that last energy. So what I'm... And regardless, he's got two prizes left. So I can let him hit the Mewtwo, and I can retreat with that Float Stone meaning that actually that floats down on the Mewtwo has gone a long way there. Because I didn't have the laser, so I wouldn't have got the KO with my Landorus anyway on his uh, Pyro. So, in the end, what I did actually turned out to be the best bet, because I wouldn't have got the KO with a Landorus due to the lack of the laser. It's just a real pain here that I'm not able to still get a tool for that Garbodor. If I can just draw one of my remaining float stones, it's fine. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to feed him a Trubbish. I'm not worried about that, because there's still plenty left in my deck. A Lassonde, or a float stone, or a supporter. There are a lot of outs in my deck. So it might look like I'm in top deck mode here, but there's so much left in my deck, I'm really not that worried. Although he is going to win the game next turn. There's a Juniper, and I'm going to draw into what I need here. There's a Floatstone. You see there, there's a Lassonde as well. And, you know, it's all good. And I can get the KO with a Mewtwo there. So here, this was not the 
general Pyroar deck that we've come to know and love. It was a more difficult matchup. It had Pokemon like Reshiram I was not expecting. And I had that awkward end to one. But by being, excuse me, by being a little bit patient, taking the kills where I could get them, I got the win there. Maybe I laboured a little bit, but I like to think I played that moderately well. As always, comment in the section, like, subscribe, and I'll see you all again soon.